This is the third segment of the Igneous chapter uh, in physical geology. Uh, when I stopped at the end of the last segment, this was the last slide I talked about. Um, it is a very important concept, so I do want you to understand because this basically, the partial or fractional melting, explains how the different magmas are forming in different plate tectonic settings. So it's really, really important, okay? Uh, so here we are. When you have, a, let's say, an oceanic continental plate boundary and the oceanic crust is going under the continental crust, the melting will occur about this, this place. And around this depth, the temperature is not higher, let's say, than 1,000 degrees Celsius. So you got a, uh, the bounce reaction series here. And the temperature is about 1,000 1, degree, degrees Celsius. And if you remember, and it's very important, I, I want you to know the every mineral on the bounce reaction series. If series, I know it's series. So at 1,000 degree, will the olivine melt? Will the pyroxene melt? Probably not even the antibody. Remember, these guys are only melt when the temperature is higher than uh, 1,000, around 1,200 degrees Celsius. Same with the calcium plagioclase. So if the temperature doesn't get higher than 1,000, only the minerals which have, like, the only minerals which will melt are the ones which crystallizes below 1,000 degrees Celsius. So we're not going to get a mafic magma, but rather like a felsic kind of magma. So you understand, this is what we call fractional melting. Not everything melts there, but only the ones which higher silica content. So therefore, you're going to get a much more phasic magma than the ori original uh, rock would provide if the whole thing had melted. So we call this fractional melting. So remember that. And that really explains everything about the different magmas and their formation. It's de defined by the plate tectonic setting. So this is very, very important that we understand that. This slide uh, shows the a global plate tectonic setting. Uh, I think uh, this is from the one of the professors at JMU. Um, the main thing is that when you have a mantle composition that is ultramafic, now, when the ultramafic mantle partially melts, it will actually produce mafic magma. So everything along uh, mid-oceanic ridges, divergent plate boundaries, is going to be mafic. So the oceanic crust is always going to be mafic. Remember that, mafic. Now, when you have convergent plate boundaries, let's say the oceanic oceanic, uh, such as Japan, then you have partial melting of the mafic magma, which will produce uh, intermediate around the volcanic arcs. So intermediate magma around the volcanic arcs. Now, if you have oceanic continental, on the other hand, that's going to make intermediate to felsic magma. The, most of the time, the continental crust is going to be very, very felsic. If you have hotspot volcanoes, such as Hawaii, what kind of magma is going to be there? Remember the magma of the hot spots coming from the mantle, so therefore it's always going to be mafic composition. So this plate tectonic figures clearly explains the different plate tectonic settings and what kind of magma is forming there. So now the plate tectonics globally explains the formation of that 200 different igneous rocks, which is really, really, really amazing. I mean, it is just, the plate tectonic is the best thing ever happened to geology other than evolution. Plate tectonics is just the bomb. So it's important that you know about it. One more thing we have to talk about is the viscosity. And the viscosity is very, very important to understand. Basically what it tells us, it tells us how well the magma is going to be able to flow. And you have changed oil in your car, so you kind of know about viscosity. Or you've seen water or alcohol, or you, you might have seen alcohol, didn't you? Uh, so you can, oh, and you use honey, didn't you? Honey. And when you try to pour honey, how fast does it slow flow? It's not very fast. So it's, it's very important, and most of you already know viscosity, so you kind of know. 
the viscosity is depend on two things one is the uh, temperature and uh, you understand that I know you already know that because what happens if you have an old honey in the ca cabinet what do you have to do with the old honey to make it flow again your old honey <laughs> anyhow uh, what do you have to do yes just put it under hot water when when you put it under hot water the honey flows much much better again so the higher the temperature the lower the viscosity remember it's a reverse relationship the higher the temperature the lower the viscosity which means it flows like water when the temperature is high on the other hand when the temperature is low your honey crystallizes it will not flow whatsoever so the lower the temperature the higher the viscosity become now the other important factor of the viscosity of the magma I'm talking about now is the SiO2 content remember when, when I went through the bounce reaction series I pointed out the different silicate structures and I told you that even when the magma is still flowing those silicate structures are already like together depending on how much SiO2 is in that magma if the SiO2 uh, per, the, the percent of the SiO2 is low the magma is full with those low individual silica oxygen tetrahedrons and they are small like little kids so they move fast you know how the toddlers are running around and you have to really uh, run hard to catch them so when the silicate structure is small the magma moves like water on the other hand when the SiO2 uh, amount is much higher like a felsic magma the magma is full with this huge big silicate structures which are three-dimensional or uh, sheet silicates they are long long uh, sheets of silicate structure moving around the magma so therefore the magma will move much 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 slower like a big fat person imagine a big fat person hobbling around that's how the magma moves when the silicate content is really high so therefore the higher the silica content the low the higher the viscosity so it's the it's it's normal relationship the higher the SiO2 content the higher the viscosity the lower the SiO2 content the lower the viscosity so it's very important just remember the high viscosity magma moves like honey the low viscosity magma moves like water it's very very important that you understand the viscosity it's important because it's going to relate to the explosiveness of the magma. So now we are at the texture of the igneous rocks. We have two major groups. One is the intrusive and the other one is the extrusive. When, when the magma is intrusive, that means it's never going to make it to the surface. A lot of the, the oceanic continental plate boundary volcano, you know, the oceanic continental plate boundary magmas which are forming right here that's continental crust the magma forms right here because because it's like remember with with uh, fractional melting only the silica rich parts of the rocks here are uh, melting out so this magma will have will be very felsic and if it's very felsic that means that it has the big silicate structures moving around so and the temperature is relatively low like 600 degrees so the magma is going to move very very slowly a lot of the time it's not even going to make up to the surface now when it stays down here it will become an intrusive intrusive so if it's an intrusive then it doesn't make it up to the surface so therefore the cooling is very very slow therefore the minerals are going to grow big so it's going to be a very um, characteristic texture on the other hand when the lava goes up to the surface and makes volcano we're going to call them extrusive so this is the extrusive intrusive and extrusive I only say extra that just means extrusive so when you have extrusive type of igneous rocks then the the magma comes all the way to the surface and it's like six seven hundred degrees Celsius uh, temperature and boom it reaches the surface where it's usually 25 degrees Celsius 
so it cools down really really fast it doesn't have time for the crystals to grow big they're just gonna be all small now we have low differences so we have a bunch of extrusive texture types so let's look at the intrusive ones uh, the intrusive texture type is what we call phanuritic, phanuritic or coarse crystalline, phanuritic. When you have phanuritic texture, that means that you can look at the igneous rocks and you can name every single mineral in there. So you can see this is cave, feldspar, you can see the biotite, you can see the quartzes and so on. So every single mineral is visible with your naked eye and we call it phanuritic, phanuritic. The extrusive type of textures are going to be the affinitic, porphyritic, glassy, fascicular, and pyroclastic. So let's go through them all. Uh, the extrusive texture starts with the affinitic. Um, when you have an affinitic texture, that just means that the uh, the minerals, as the magma comes up to the surface, the minerals cools down really quick and they don't have any time to grow so therefore they're gonna stay uh, teeny tiny crystals and the rock becomes very very fine grained this is affinitic you basically cannot see any crystals but if you look up close you will see some lost packs of biotite or probably amphibole and you sometimes can see some cave feldspar uh, in the matrix you know in the fi among the fine grained um, material the next one is the porphyritic texture. When you have porphyritic texture, that means that you have big, some big crystals, like on this picture right here, like some big. We call them phenocrysts, phenocrysts. And then uh, you have the matrix, which is very fine grained. You cannot really see anything. So we call that matrix or ground mass. So in the porphyritic texture, you've got the so-called phenocrysts and you have the matrix or ground mass, okay, porphyritic. That means as the magma was coming up on the way, as it was coming, some crystals started to grow so they are bigger and then when it got to the surface, it cooled down really quickly so everything else is very small. So we call it porphyritic. Like in this case, this is amphibole. Sometimes you might have some biotite, uh, depends. So you have to look for them. The next one is the glassy. You also can call it hyaline. That also just means glassy here, line, hyaline. And uh, the glassy texture just means that when the magma got to the surface, it cooled down instantly. So basically no crystals have grown in it. Uh, if you if you checked it, it would have a amorphous uh, inside structure means no structure. So basically, what you see here is a volcanic glass. Depending on the chemical composition of the magma, which is mostly like very high silica granitic composition, uh, you're gonna get red, dark, black, or I've seen blue. But the most common one really is the black, but there are some which is red. So don't get scared if you see absolutely um, cool red obsidian um, because the only thing which is going to be glassy is the obsidian so that's what you will have to know uh, the next one is the vesicular structure the vesicular um, texture usually forms along you know at the end of, edge of the mag like here is the volcano you're going to get vesicular structure right around here so this is the t place where the all the magma has all the gas bubbles in it. So basically this texture is nothing but glass uh, hair, kind of hair like pieces with a lot of gas bubbles. Um, this is what we call pumice. And the, uh, the pumice is what we use. Um, this is the best insulator in the whole world. So there are places where actually they use this for uh, housing. Uh, where it's naturally occurring like in Australia like actually in my own country Hungary there are people who dig houses into this kind of rocks and uh, it's really cool because in the summer it keeps cool and in the winter it keeps warm um, so that's the vesicular uh, texture 
And the very last texture type you will have to know is the so-called pyroclastic. When you have pyroclastic te texture, that just means that it has volcanic rock fragments and it's cemented by volcanic ash. So usually this will happen uh, when the volcano has uh, ash eruptions with, with some rock fragments. So that gets cemented together and this is what we call uh, pyroclastic texture. This here is the classification of igne igneous rocks. Uh, we're going to go by the groups, you know, starting with felsic, intermediate, mafic, ultramafic groups. And inside each group, we're going to go through the intrusive and then the different types of extrusive texture. So we're going to go by groups and then texture. Uh, I guess I'm going to finish this segment right here and I will continue with the next segment where we go through the rocks. Okay, bye for now.